Tommy here from Learn Systems. We're going to talk about virtual machine migration. We're going to focus on the tool Clonezilla. Clonezilla is something that's free, open source. I've been using it for a long time. I've cloned a lot of systems with it. And one of the nice things about Clonezilla is it has a built-in network stack that allows you to transfer from one source system to a destination system without having to go through and create an image file first. I like this feature because, well, creating an image file is one step and then decoding the image file and bringing it back over into another system is another step. And now you're talking about a lot more time. Doing it this way, we're going to do a direct from one network image to another network image and push it right across. So you run Clonezilla on the source and destination, really simple to do, and it's going to clone it and really easy one step. Now, I do have a separate video where I dive into using how to convert physical disk using virtual disk, disk to VHD. So I do have that video if you're interested in doing it that way. And that's out of scope for this particular topic. We want to focus on how we do it with Clonezilla and how to make it easy. Before we dive into all these details, let's first. If you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now back to our content. Now, in case you haven't heard of it, what is Clonezilla besides a website that looks a little bit dated, but I love the simplicity of it when there's no marketing team and it's just a great open source tool. And Clonezilla is a partition and disk image cloning program similar to the True Image or Norton Ghost. Remember those? Those have been, well, I haven't used those in a while. There's plenty of more modern ones out there. And actually, this can be done with other tools. But this is the free and open source Clonezilla, and we're going to use that today. And it does work great. Clonezilla live is suitable for single machine backup and restore. Now I will admit it goes out of scope of this particular talk, but yes, it does support cloning, like they say 40 plus computers simultaneously. It has some cool features for setting up complete servers and cloning and imaging systems. It's got a lot of fun features. We're just gonna use the basics of it and use it in the beginner mode, but they got some documentation here if you wanna use it in some of those other modes, or if you wanna mass deploy something using Clonezilla. Well, let's go over here to the download and we're using the testing version 2.7 O-26. Uh, this is the latest as of right now. Um, it's actually had the same interface for quite a while, even years ago when I used this. I, I Even though I downloaded this today and this is the latest as of today, it's been the same interface for quite a while. So that's one thing nice about it. If you learn it now, it uh, is pretty simple to use later. Now right here, VirtualBox is going to be our source. So let's log into this. All right. And our source is going to be VirtualBox running a Debian system that I've cloned over. And actually, before I set this demo up, I cloned it from XCPNG to VirtualBox, and now we're going to be taking it from VirtualBox over to XCPNG. And the hypervisor doesn't really matter if you're using Hyper-V, VMware. I've actually used this all over the place to get virtual machines from where they are to where people want them to be. And like I said, Clonezilla is free, so it's low-hanging fruit to use this one. So let's shut this system down. Actually, to show you that it works on the internet too, so you ping something. Uh, 1.1.1. All right, works. We got it online and everything's up and running. So let's shut it down and power it off. And now we're going to boot it up off the disk. And now out of scope of this, because it varies from whatever hypervisor you're using is getting the settings right. So you can attach an ISO oh, in VirtualBox. It's pretty easy. Go here, choose Clonezilla. There we go. So there's my Clonezilla boot ISO. Actually, I should double check, make sure I got the boot order correct. So I go over here to system, uh, floppy, funny, but we'll just go with optical and hard disk. We want it to boot off of that ISO here in VirtualBox. Now this is our source. So we're going to go ahead and hit start. But before we do something of note, Clonezilla VDI normal 65 gigs. That means our destination has to have at least 65 gigs of storage or more. Now Clonezilla doesn't auto expand and have all those fancy options in it natively when we use the basic mode and it's out of scope of this video. I just wanted to talk about how to get started. If you have another tool that has all the cool auto expand or you can auto expand later by booting again and uh, editing the partitions out of scope of this particular video, but 
it is important to know the destination has to at minimum be the same size. Bigger is going to be a little bit preferred just in case there's some type of alignment issues that you're running to. So at least 70 gigs is what we're going to go with on our destination. Let's go ahead and start up and look at Clonezilla from the source side. Just go ahead and boot up the live one here. All right, choose your default keyboard layout. I'm fine with US, customize as you see fit. Start Clonezilla. All right, now the shell command that came up first is actually kind of neat. One of the things it's gonna tell us here is what the shell command is for this menu driven system. And why that's important is because you are possibly gonna do this more than once and if you are, you will want to just know what command instead of going through these menus each time. It will actually create the command line. You can just go right to the command line and type in the command to set this up and these settings without going through a menu each time, if you need to. A lot of times it's a one-off and I like the menu-driven system because it works really well. Now we have the image or device device. So we can clone from machine to machine locally, device to image because we want to put it somewhere or we want to set up remote source. This is the bypass creating an image and then importing the image on the other system. So we're just going to remote source. Beginner mode is perfectly fine. Disk to disk or part to remote. Now, if you want a partition or do you want a disk to disk, we're going to go full disk to disk here. So disk to remote local disk, DHCP. Static IP works fine too. Um, DHCP server setup, so we're going to go ahead and take advantage of it. it. Saves me some typing. What is the source drive? There's only one, so it only has one option here. Uh, live dangerously and skip repairing source file system. That's fine. I knew it booted. I know it works. We're fine with skipping the check. Choose what to do when it's finished. Well, we're just going to ask me. Don't You can tell it's a power off, and this is kind of a nice thing if you want it to auto power down the VM when you're done. But we're just going to say choose, but it's one of the options. Now, here's that command I was talking about, and you can see it down here. This is what we could do to actually run this automatically again if we wanted to and just run it from the command line. It built that command for us using this menu. Press enter. It's going to go ahead and check out the disk, create the process, and get everything prepped and ready here. It's got to do its inventory, find out what's on here. Found the device. Waiting for the machine to connect. Now they give us the command to use on the other one, but don't worry, we're just going to use the menu to make life easy. So right here, the IP address is 192.168.3.114. This will allow me to connect to the other system with this IP address and pull all the data over. So let's get this out of the way and go over to Zen Orchestra and create a new virtual machine. Uh, this is Debian, so we'll just choose this. Don't worry if your exact one's not in there. Clone Zilla Demo. Give it a couple CPUs, let's say four. Two gigs of RAM, sounds good. We've already got the Clonezilla over here. Uh, storage. Eh, well, let's drop it on the true NAS that I was doing some testing on. Whoops. Now here's that important part. 10 gigs is the default. That doesn't seem like enough. We'll just put 70, at least the same size or bigger, as I said. So we've done all the creation here, have some CPUs, memory, et cetera, assigned to it. We're gonna go ahead and hit create and let it boot off of this. All right, go over here to console. All right, same menu options here. Choose the keyboard, leave it at English. Start Clonezilla. Now this is the remote destination. So this is where we're going to be cloning to. DHCP is fine, it's on the same network, perfect. Now here we go where we have 3.1. It recognized that as the DHCP server, but 3.114 is where we want it to be. So we just type in 1.4, whoops. Hit OK. Restore disk, restore partition. If you don't do the same choice, we chose push a disk, that means we have to restore a disk. If we were doing partition, we have to choose partition. It doesn't know yet, uh, so you have to choose the right one. Where do you want to land it? We only have one drive, 75 gig drive we created here. Press Enter to continue. All right. Are you sure you want to do this? I feel confident I want to destroy all the data on this drive I just created, which has no data on it. Now, on rare occasions, on some systems when I moved them, 
It'll ask me to do this twice. I don't know why. It will not do the changes and I have to restart Clonezilla and it works. But this time it worked perfectly fine. I have seen that. Um, in case you're wondering, the solution, relatively simple, um, rerun Clonezilla. It's it's rare, but sometimes it seems to get stuck on writing on some hypervisors, uh, but not with XCPNG. It's been some of the other ones. XCPNG, it seems to work perfectly fine in. So there's nothing changing over here, but as you can see over here, it's working. So we're reading from Tom's computer. This is waiting for Target Machine Connect, but it's listening and running through the process right here. And I have a 10 gig network connected, but obviously there's other limitations between this is a 10 gig network and it's using that same 10 gig connection for the storage for this particular demo lab I have set up. So while it may be importing a 10 gig, it also has to write 10 gig over that same network interface, which will cause a little bit of slowdowns, but it's going relatively fast here. We'll go ahead and skip ahead to the end. All right, it's just about finished. And I do want to note, it does say device size versus space in use. It is space aware, so it didn't have to transfer fully 62 gigs. It only had to transfer the 18 gigs that were actually in use. One of the reasons it went a little bit faster, that was all a couple minute process. It's going to do some checking to make sure that this is set up properly. It's going to confirm that the Grub is set up because this was Linux. It's going to try to use the Grub 2 to restore the OS, double check everything. All right, and it's back at asking what we want to do. We could rerun, start over, but we're going to go with power off. Now we're going to go here, make sure hard drive is set to boot, go to the disk, eject this, go to the console, start this back up. All right, hey, looks like a success here. Let's log in. While we have success, we've completely cloned this same machine, but we're not online. Network unreachable. This is one of the challenges you run into right away. Now with Windows, obviously it's gonna start doing some new hardware detection when you change hypervisors. And I will admit too, if you are doing this with Windows, and I mentioned this in my P2V, uh, if you have any type of special tools installed for drivers in Windows, you may wanna remove those. This generally goes for any operating system. If you're going from like VMware, remove the VMware tools before you migrate it over to XCPNG. But let's get into the network settings, which is actually pretty easy on Linux here. I have config-a, show me all the interfaces. So eth0 is there, but unconfigured. If we just go to I have config, well, we don't have any interfaces. We just go to here and etc network and interfaces, and it's still looking for ENP0S3, which was its name in VirtualBox. So now we just got to type eth0. ETH zero. I'm going to reboot it real quick. Obviously someone's screaming. I could just have restarted the network stack. Absolutely. I could. I like to make sure everything works on boot. So we'll reboot real quick, but that's it. It should come up and have full network capabilities. Now I have config. Hey, look, it's got an IP address. It sets a DHCP. It got 3.110. So let's go ahead and and we're pinging things and we're back online and the cloning is complete. Now, as far as our VirtualBox machine, it's still sitting here. We could actually keep running it again if we wanted to clone this in more places. It just kind of hangs out here, but we're going to head and shut it down. But once you've kicked it off and you want to leave it as a source on the network, you can keep pulling it back from that source if you'd like to. That's uh, It doesn't shut this side down once the source has been pulled, it still sits there quietly waiting for maybe the next source. And as I stated, it does have some more advanced features you can get into um, where I believe it does some multicasting. So you can have multiple simultaneous systems cloning across the network. Uh, there are some neat features that you can do with it that goes above and beyond the scope of this particular video. But Clonezilla is definitely a great tool. And it's just an easy way when you have to do these migrations from one hypervisor to another. VM migration, uh, we obviously would take it a lot longer and my video uh, dives deeper into converting files and you know like i said that has its own challenges and because you have to do one step of conversion and then another step of conversion uh, it can be a little bit more challenging when you do it this way you're doing right from one network source to another network source your limitation of course is the speed of that network source but if you got a 10 gig connection we cloned a 60 gig system here in only a few minutes so well, yeah well 18 gigs used 60 gig drive 18 gigs used i, I should be very clear on that i know all right and thanks and thank you for making it to the end of the video. 
If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.